Hello and welcome to DevNet Create. This is Japan Theater Session. I'm so excited to share what's happening around DevNet and programmability in Japan. I'm Kazumasa and my colleague Sakane-san from Tokyo Innovation Lab will present in this session. Okay, let me start with my brief introduction. I'm a principal architect under Architecture Systems Engineering Organization. I'm mainly focusing on enterprise networking as well as almost everything around DevNet in Japan. I'm active on social, so please reach out to me on Twitter, Cisco Blogs, and sorry in Japanese, but Cisco Press Books as well in Japan. DevNet journey in Japan. We have been driving programmability initiatives for years, especially regarding DevNet. I remember it's almost six years. We started around 2014. We don't have any specific team for DevNet actually here in Japan, but we have a virtual team, which is running almost everything across Roland organizations. We are covering not only technical topics, but also business initiatives. DevNet means a lot, starting from learning, skill development, and we have exciting events like DevNet Create, DevNet Express. Then we are sharing outcomes, including demo, code, prototyping, solutions through innovation challenge or code exchange or some, some kinds of demo or event. Lastly, we need to make business with DevNet very seriously. It's like uh, something huge called huge cost reduction with automation or developing new business or solution with partner or customers. This is totally what we are focusing on from learning experience to business, develop, business development DevNet life cycle. I'm glad to share our physical two days event on February in Tokyo. It is Ideathon and Hackathon event. You find in the pictures, they look really enjoyed and very, very excited. We combined attendees, veterans from our partners and customers and young and fresh students from universities. Also business and technical, networking and application engineers were totally mixed and work together in person. We believe innovation may not come from only geek engineers or technical people and only from network veterans. We need business people and we need young and fresh people. So we used uh, not only coding, but also we use design thinking method at day one, Ideathon, with very, very mixed attendees. Design thinking is also a very important topic and uh, it is covered by DevNet initiatives. Okay, let me wrap up my part with real customers and partners case study. How many customers and partners are happy with DevNet? Many, many in Japan. Here is an example of real case studies. They are getting real benefit with DevNet and programmability in production. Our big customers and partners you know, uh, like NTT, Fujitsu, Hitachi are there, as well as customers like uh, Sega Sami and uh, Computer Courage in Osaka. In terms of product and technology, you find Meraki, ICE, ASA, DNS Center, SCI, SD1, WebEx Teams, Stealth Watch, and Cisco Modeling Labs in production. Variety of Cisco products are really aware of programmability and we have real customer today with them. Not only the spreadsheet, you can hear the real voice from them on Cisco Japan YouTube channel. Don't worry, uh, we added English caption with the video and the DevNet playlist. Please check and enjoy what's happening with DevNet in Japan from them directly on YouTube. Let's over to Sakane-san, uh, my colleague from Tokyo Innovation Lab. He will share his experience and a more specific case study. Thank you very much. Hi guys, I'm Shoichi, software engineer working for Tokyo Innovation Lab. For my part, I'm gonna talk about innovation activities in Japan. First, let me introduce the Tokyo Innovation Lab, where I work. 
Tokyo Innovation Lab is located at Tokyo, Japan, which is under a group named Emerging Technologies and Incubation, focusing on the next wave of innovation by anticipating, investing in, and incubating、uh, new technologies and business ventures. Together with companies, startups,、uh, universities, R&D institutions, open communities, and other eco partners in the Japan region, we strategically promote incubation and innovation. And work to solve initial problems and co creation through workshops and rapid prototyping. For example,、uh, we've been developing a solution that integrates Cisco's technologies and products in the area of IoT and digital transformation. From this year, with ET and AI venture program, we are going to focus more on incubation. So, as one of our activities,、uh, we accept interns every、uh, few years. In May this year, we hosted two university students as interns、uh, from Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. I served as a mentor for the third time in my Cisco life. Due to COVID 19, all the meetings were held remotely for three months from the start to the end of this internship. Regular meetings were held via WebEx Teams once a week. We always tried to keep our communication going in WebEx Teams and, if necessary, launch WebEx meetings to share issues quickly and accurately and resolve them as quickly as possible.、Uh, as, a result, as a result, we are actually able to share our ideas and insights very closely. They looked comfortable, and I believe the、uh, internship was successful. So, here is a brief overview of what they made.、Uh, as a result of the recent pandemic, a significant、uh, reduction in air pollution was observed. Uh, I, uh, also, during the pandemic, the country and the cities are closed off, and the movement of people and the pet,、uh, vehicle outdoors、uh, is restricted for a long period of time. Therefore, we focused on the relationship between air pollution and the increase or decrease of a pandemic, and thought that analyzing satellite images could contribute to preventing the spread of COVID 19. In addition, we thought that we could improve our insight into the prevention of expansion by combining the analysis at the ground level, where the movement of pedestrians and vehicles can be studied effectively. However, image analysis requires a highly specialized knowledge of deep learning. A lot of fantastic tools have been developed to cover this, but even then, it's not easy for、uh, non technical persons who should realize the fact of the world change. By using WebEx Teams as an interactive interface, we think that it's helpful for such people to receive the results of image analysis and report summarized. So, in the development phase, firstly, the team developed a chatbot based on the WebEx Teams SDK provided by DevNet on GitHub. This SDK was completely very well done compared to other related SDKs, so, with a few modifications, a basic chatbot was able to be created. Next, by utilizing Google Earth Engine API from the chatbot, Lots of satellite images collected by Google Earth Engine w a s able to be processed, and the result can be displayed at the space in WebEx Teams. Furthermore, using adaptive cards defined by Microsoft, they improved the interface so that you can easily input the parameters for search or processing images and show the result effectively. They also embedded a web server to provide the result of analysis into WebEx Teams. On the other hand, they use the NVIDIA Digits, which is a web application for training deep learning models. To train thousands of、uh, aerial photographs to create a unique image analysis engine. For a feasibility study here, they installed the digits on the DevNet Sandbox for Cisco UCSC 418 ML server, 
The sandbox was much helpful that they was able to skip the tedious hardware assembly and configuration time. For the actual training, they used two of NVIDIA V100 with the help of Toronto Innovation Lab. And they embedded, the, uh, they embedded this trained model into the chatbot. Their chatbot have been published on GitHub already. You can check it if you like. Well, in the early phase of this project, both of the interns said they had knowledge of Python but had never used Cisco's products and tools and they had never been aware of client-server communication or uh, virtual environments. Nevertheless, I think it's not worthy that they managed to get this so far in such a short period of time. I think this is uh, because DevNet has provided the useful tools. Thanks to DevNet for making them. I look forward to seeing the DevNet community continue to grow and be enriched with great tools in the future. I'm also a software engineer, so I'm happy to help in any way I can. Thanks for uh, listening.